Hello, this is Dr. John Spink, Director of the Food Fraud Initiative at Michigan State University and an Assistant Professor in the College of Veterinary Medicine. And this is an overview of, of our Food Fraud Tabletop Exercise, FFTTX, Something's Fishy. And this was a project funded under the FDA's Innovative Food Defense Program, IFPD. Part of the grant deliverable was to develop this content, but also to conduct a pilot exercise, which we did on June 18th, 2013. This report has been updated on March, uh, in March 2015 and will continue to update the overall activities and content uh, over time. First off, just to give you a little bit of background. So the grant was um, awarded to the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. Uh, the principal investigator is uh, Mr. Brad Deacon. And then Michigan State University's Food Fraud Initiative was a subcontractor that helped with that project. So noted here is Brad Deacon, Emergency Response, Emergency Management and Administrative Law Coordinator for, for MDARD. And he's been leading or helping coordinate food defense and food protection programs uh, across the state, which include now food fraud. And then my work at Michigan State University focuses on strategy and policy. Um, we don't do testing or uh, develop of new, new uh, methods or anything. We focus only on things like this, which is implementation and capacity building. And Dr. Doug Moyer is a researcher with us at the Food Fraud Initiative, also an assistant professor in, in the public health program at Michigan State University. So he brings a unique perspective. And here's details of the grant. So overall, this grant is, is a part of a bigger FDA program, uh, the Freebie program. And that's the Food Related Emergency Exercise Bundles. And there's a number of these online where they uh, fund the development of content, resources, and um, um, support materials to help things like training. So you'll see FDA does have a website there, and there's also a video uh, with one of the leaders of the program if you want more information. What we did is we created this situation manual, which is the, uh, the program, uh, the details for an instructor to lead through the program, everything from coordinating, uh, um, you know, printing of 10 cards all the way through the content itself. And we also created this presentation. So there's a PowerPoint that goes along with this so an instructor can lead the course himself. We went ahead and then developed videos. So we've got videos for each of the presentation sections. This can either lead to an automated um, tabletop exercise uh, or a, a facilitator can use se separate portions of the video to supplement their work. For example, there's some additional information and expertise provided on food fraud and that some of those sections can be used. In all, we had 72 participants in Lansing, Michigan, as well as an online team in the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and the NCFPD. So we coordinated this across the live event across two states. We had representatives from federal, state, local, industry, academia, as well as enforcement and public health, as well as regulators. <laughs> we also conducted pilots at the Institute of Food Technologies Annual Conference and the NEHA Annual Conference. So from all of this, we were able to run the pilot, gather more information, and put together this final document. The agenda. Overall, we have a welcome and overview. We go through an introduction to the, the research itself and the tabletop exercise, an overview of food fraud and economically motivated adulteration. We cover laws and regulations and we update this because things do change quickly from 2013 to 2015 and then on. There will be new um, industry guidance documents. There'll be more uh, final rules for things like FISMA and other laws. And it starts with pre-incident. So we give some background on the on an incident, a little bit, just a little bit of, uh, 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 of the situation of a scenario. And we have an exercise and a recap as a group. Then we provide more information. So they get a little bit more and can start to think about the exercise and recap. Then we have a third moment where we give even more. Along the way, they review questions, um, how the situation should work, what would they do, and, and really try to stress test and think about uh, the processes and systems. And then we have an aftermath to talk about the details. Through the evaluation and closing comments, we then really look at trying to uh, provide some, some guidance to help uh, the individuals think about how their, they or their agency would work uh, to coordinate food fraud prevention activities or responding to an incident. We've added other types of updates uh, and background, uh, global industry and government activities. This is updated and will continue to be updated because as with the laws and regulations, these change quite a bit. So we do look at this as a living document and it will continue to be a resource. 
open questions for all groups. These are some selected questions that we have provided just to show you the type of detail that we have. What should an inspector do next? So we create a scenario and then we say that there's, a, there's an inspector walking in, here's what they see. So it's really uh, a challenge to think about this because we, we slowly reveal it. Um, we also try not to give too much away at the start. They know this is a food fraud incident, but they don't know what type of incidents they're looking for. So we try a little bit of misdirection, but it's not to the point of, of being um, illogical. These are all plausible uh, um, situations that, ha that actually are, are based in known incidents. Now we did have to put more of the incidents together to make it more obvious and to cover more of the topics, but definitely the situation is plausible. There are potential, I mean, are there public, potential public health threats? So as a food inspector going in, they're usually thinking about public health issues, but there's a lot of other types of vulnerabilities or illegal activity. And sometimes those vulnerabilities or illegal activity may actually be indicators of some other unique types of situations where there are actual public health threats. Maybe, maybe ones that are not very obvious, but ones that become revealed. Would you report it to whom, when, and how? Of course, we hear, uh, see something, say something, but think about if you get a phone call about some odd issue that you've never heard of. You don't know quite where to send it. You do need more information. What more information do you need? And that's what we try to do to put them in a situation to think about how should that information coming in be handled and, and how would you uh, express it to, to somebody else? Which other agency should be involved? So partially, if we're going from one agency to another, we need to be able to uh, define the problem in terms that that new or other agency can uh, comprehend and can assess. And sometimes that's difficult, specifically if we're looking like at a public health agency and a law enforcement agency. What role does law, law enforcement play now? A key is that these are usually food safety inspectors going in to do a food safety inspection. And all of a sudden, if there's criminal activity, at what point should law enforcement be involved? And then what type of incidents does law enforcement prioritize? When would the industry brand owners be notify, notified? Along the way, you know, partially there's investigations and, and you don't want to let a perpetrator know that you're investigating as, you, as you're gathering information, they can destroy evidence. But at the same time, there's a lot of, of a lot of the brand owners and manufacturers, they have a lot of insight that could help the process. And most times the, the overall company is being deceived as well uh, by some, some individual perpetrators along the way. And so there's a point where, where there should be more collaboration but that's an interesting point that we, we did start to get into. What would the public and the media be told and when? Then this is a real key about, you know, during an investigation versus a public health incident. So with that, that's our program. The information will be available uh, at our website at foodfraud.msu.edu. Feel free to contact us if you have any other questions. Thank you.